happen, but really happy to see Canada moving on into the final in the She Believes Cup. Not a perfect performance for Canada by any means. The first half with lots of notes for Bev Priestman, but they get the job done. We will see you Tuesday. And Annie Petrillo, it's supposed to rain on Tuesday in Columbus. Enjoy that. We've heard this one before. Julia Grosso gets the winning penalty kick. This time, though, it sends them to the final of the She Believes Cup. We know the golden one that won them that Olympic gold, but the Canadians tying this one up in the 77th minute, forcing PKs against Brazil. They are elated. They will now get their rematch against the Americans here at the She Believes Cup. That'll go. April 9th at 7 p.m. ET right here on One Soccer, of course, as we welcome you back into our One Soccer studio. Andy Petrillo, Jordan Wilson, and Jess Lisi with you. Okay, I also want to talk about PKs just for a moment. We're going to break down this game. But PKs, that was also a bone of contention in the semifinal in the Gold Cup. It was. Not good against the Americans. What did you make of what the Canadians did this time? Much better. Conviction. <laughs> no, there are four great pens, and you're looking at Leon... Jay Rose, Arujo, and Grosso. But it was confidence, right? When you look at you play the Americans in the semifinal of the Gold Cup, everyone looked tentative. Jay Rose went up with a little smile, but tucked the ball away and knew where they wanted to go. So they're beautiful penalties to win the game. Yeah, and just to point out, you know, for Jade Rose and Simi Wujo to step up, that shows confidence. So that, that's huge for Canada, knowing that those two players, you know, they're up and coming for Canada, and they're confident to step up there in this big moment and, you know, ultimately bury it. I love it. Yeah, and against the Americans, too, in that Gold Cup semifinal, they were all like that mid-height. It was very easy for Nair to make those saves for the Americans. These ones, I mean, they were picking a lot of corners. Beth Priestman said they've been working on them. I'm sure they went back and looked at those goals against the Americans and said not good enough for those PKs, I should say. And here it's a completely different ballgame. Now, here's something that's also interesting uh, because Brazil tried to take a page out of the Netherlands playbook where Louis van Gaal put in Tim Krul, as we know, the 2014 World Cup. They made a change here, taking Borges out, putting Lorena in, but it didn't work out for them. I, I think it worked out in some degree because Lorena is obviously someone that feels good uh, and, and usually plays. But yeah, like the, the Canadians just took those, those penalties so well and put it in the corner. I don't think any keeper could say that, but when you're obviously, it's also an intimidation factor. When you have a keeper that played and she had a good match, Borges, but you take her out in the last minute, he's like, who's this coming in? It's like a heavyweight champion yeah. coming in, coming in for the last three minutes just for pens. You're like, we don't know who this is. <laughs> so it didn't work, to answer your question or to, to piggyback off of what you said. That's got to be hard for a goalkeeper, too, though. Yeah. For yeah. Lorena to come on in. Well, she did her job. Yeah. She did her she job. Did. She had her game. This is maybe not her forte, which is her first game. This is a debut. So it's like, you understand why Lorena's playing. All right. So here's our All State save of the match. This one's going to Kaylin Sheridan. She made some good ones in the game, but I want to go to this because. I don't care what you say. You could be like, ah, she's at the end of her career, Annie. No, this is Marta. And anytime you can make a save on Marta, that's like you made a save on Messi. That's like you made a save on Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. You are making a save on Marta. Kay. I mean, Kaylin, she's, she's holding it in, but I, I mean, you can see the bench right there, but I feel like there's a lot of, ugh. Kaylin Sheridan doesn't need to tell her children, <laughs> if she has children one day, that she saved Marta's <laughs> penalty kick at a certain time. She doesn't have to say the date. She just has to say she saved it. She just said, I saved this it. This could have been 2002. It doesn't matter. She saved it. And it was a great save, but it also gave that momentum for the other players, right, to kickstart that we can actually win this game. Tell me you're not. She's going home, though, and she's telling her dog. Sure. You know she's going home and telling her dog. That's the most important person to tell. I know. Well, person. Po most important. They're me? people. Yeah. I, They're I'm, people, wow. too. I mean, okay. I two of them at home. going to, like, attack me for saying people, so I'm, I'm going home. No, no, no. <laughs> They're people too, okay? They're called Ginger and Pepper, and so listen, they have <laughs> feelings. Babies. Let's get to our Gatorade performance of the match. Uh, and this one as well, like this is, so we're giving this one to Jessie Fleming because she was asked to do a lot. We didn't like that we felt she was just running around like crazy in that first half, Jordo. Some changes were made by Bev Priestman in the second, but Jessie Fleming, like a true captain, performed whatever role was being asked of her. Absolutely, and that first clip that we saw, this is before the, the cross to set up the, the goal. It was her tracking back, and we talked about, and I mentioned the first half that she's doing all these dog runs and, and stuff that people should be doing for her to get her the ball. But this is a captain performance, a step up to put in that bit of quality right there to give Vanessa Gilles the header. But it's the tracking back, it was the incessant running, it was the leading. And yeah, she's not a vocal leader, but by service, by commitment, that's how she led, and it was that little inch or that little effort that, was a, that allowed Canada to get back into this game.
Yeah, Jesse Fleming was huge tonight. You know, I think at the end of the day, like, yeah, you want Jesse Fleming on the ball, but there aren't many players like Jesse Fleming that can do this dirty work. And at the end of the day, again, she is somebody that is going to put Canada on their, her back time and time again and prove why she is wearing that captain's armband and why she is arguably the best player that Canada has. Mm -hmm. So I think Jesse Fleming is very deserving of this player of the match. She did all the hard runs in the first half. She did them in the second half. She continued to do it the entire time. So, yeah, definitely well-deserved. Mentioned, we mentioned that she's in the engine room, right? The midfield where, where good things happen and that energy happens. And I do think that she needs help. I do think yeah. whether that's a Wujo, Gross, or however you play with two or with three. But that's where you start. If you see a captain running back, helping, doing slide tackles, you have to be better than that. And that's, that's what sets the stage. So especially in this modern game, leaders, when your captain is working that hard, it just sets the tempo for everyone else. Uh, we were all calling for Bev Priestman to make some changes in that second half. We know she was trying something new. So a bit of a, a two-part question here. Do you like the fact that she's tinkering with formation and lineup in something like this, the She Believes Cup? Secondly, what did you make of the changes she made in the second half? I think now's the time we were talking about it off air. I agree that now would be the time to do that for She Believes. But I'm also just thinking when I look at this team play and I'm very invested, you see me screaming. They don't see, but you guys see me screaming. You hear it too. You hear me and you're like, what's going on? This guy is a <laughs> lunatic. But I just want to see Canada progress. So yes, I understand that it's the time to do that. But I also just want to see them play their best football. And that diamond just wasn't working. But this is the time to try that. I think Bev Priestman could have made those subs sooner not wait till half. You could see that wasn't working. Fleming was isolated, maybe putting another body in there. And that might not even have been changing players. That might have just been changing how you're attacking, dropping Heidemann next to Fleming and having more stability. But this is the time to try it. It worked out for Canada. And now there's a revenge match upon us. Yeah, and we saw, because Jesse Fleming was the only midfielder as well in that first half, we saw some changes. Simia Wujo coming on in as well. What did you make of the second half changes that then led to the chances and ultimately the tying goal? It was absolutely a better half from Canada. I think players like Simia Wujo coming in made a huge difference. She was able to pick up some of the slack that Jesse Fleming was having to pick up. All those crazy runs she was having to make to try to save Canada a bit. Simia Wujo did really fit in well. She also helped in the attack and setting plays up. So I thought overall the subs that came in did an awesome job. Even when Julia Grosso came in, we, we spoke a bit about this off air. Um, you know, we're used to seeing Julia Grosso in the middle of the pitch. We didn't expect her to be out there on the flank. Um, but actually, when I first met Julia Grosso, she was playing as a fullback. That's where Bev had her. Um, and, you know, she is a player that although she's her best position and ideally she is in the middle, you want the ball at her feet. Her left foot, she is still very dangerous, regardless of where she is on the pitch, with her left foot. So seeing her out on that flank, who knows? Potentially that is, you know, something that she has in her, in her toolbox to be able to, you know, solidify a, a, a spot on that roster. Because she is, does have that versatility, even though we haven't seen it as much because she is typically playing in that 8 or that 10 role. The byproduct as well of Bev substitutions, putting a rouge on, adding some stability, allowed uh, Adriana Leon to come into the game. First half, we didn't see her. Yeah. But second half, she was alive. She was able to create chances. So you just want to see that more from Canada. Let's take a look at the full-time stats. It was Brazil who struck first, 22nd minute, scoring on a PK. Canada tying it up, 77th minute, going straight to penalties. They get the job done. The Canadians will now move on and get that rematch. No rain, please. We just really want to see this match. Dry. Both teams, yeah, nice and dry at their best potential. Julia Grosso getting the winning PK here today at the She Believes Cup. You continue to watch Match Day Live, presented by CIBC on One Soccer. CanadaSoccerStore.com is the official home for the widest range of Canada Soccer licensed products, match jerseys, and fanwear. Over. Brilliant! What a strike! Again, I say, who else? Do we really have any choice at all? Everyone has a choice, and every choice has a consequence. Which do you choose? Uh -uh. Life's full of tough choices, Emma. How do you choose?
from the edge of your seat or up on your feet. Let them hear you cheer. Allstate and its 900 agents proudly support Canadian soccer at every level. Visit allstate.ca. Toyota's electrified vehicles are for everyone. Every chauffeur, snack connoisseur, every scenery soaker, practical joker, every road tripper, toe dipper, every nine to fiver, every long driver. Starting over 20 years ago with the Prius, we now have the largest lineup of electrified vehicles in Canada because this journey belongs to everyone. Join us again on Tuesday, April 9th. We're going to get you started for Canada versus USA, 6.30 p.m. ET, right here on One Soccer. It's the final of the She Believes Cup. The Americans have won six times in the previous eight editions. Uh, Canada, their best finish, third in 2021. We agree, now's the time to tinker. Bev did that in this game. Against the USA, do you go with the lineup you would prefer? No tinkerage no. needed for this next match. It is not a word. Tinkerage. No tinkerage. It's okay, it sounded good. Don't play around. <laughs> this is a revenge match. Canada has not beaten the United States on American soil in 20 years. This is the time when you talk to Canadian fans, they're like, oh, that game shouldn't have play been played, which I agree. But the Americans still won. Now you're playing in a final. There's no better team in this world that you'd want to beat and have confidence if you're Canada, then the United States. You go and if you play an immaculate match and you beat them, you're going into the next maybe three or four matches before the Olympics feeling good. This is not time for experiments. This is a time to get the job done. Yeah, and you know, we spoke last time. Megan Rapinoe said she had never lost to Canada the entire time Easy. she played for the American national team. I don't want these young American players to be able to say that. Mm -hmm. Canada mm -hmm. needs to go out there and beat them, right? I, again, this is the time to do it. This is an American team that is rebuilding. And Canada is, you know, they've had these players. There are some young players like a Samia Wujo and a Jade Rose coming up. But for the most part, these young players on Canada, they've been here a while. They, they have that momentum. They've been together. So I think it would be an awesome time for Canada to go out there, prove what they're all about, and, you know, leave everything, all those losses in the past. <laughs> that was the question heading into the Gold Cup was now the time to take advantage of the Americans who seem to be in transition and while they're still winning let's not forget they did go out and win the inaugural Gold Cup. They're not blowing teams away anymore. They faced Brazil in that Gold Cup final. It was a 1-0 win. They played earlier today beat Japan 2-1 got the winning goal off a penalty kick and it was close against Canada. They just adapted to the conditions better. So I'm excited for Tuesday. I Come hope on. you are. Join us 6.30 p.m. ET Canada USA. She Believes Cup trophy on the line. Thanks for tuning in today, everyone. We'll see you next time. At your local legion, we're marching to the beat of a different drum on a mission to support veterans, to have fun, and to welcome everyone to our ranks. You don't have to be a veteran to join the legion. And as a member, you'll join thousands of others serving our veterans, our communities, and our country. Oh yeah, and our member perks program will save you thousands on shopping,